Hello everyone. You're probably wondering why you're uh, focused in on some dumbbells and plates. I'm just going to leave it focused on that because uh, it's kind of symbolic, you know, as we get older we have to stay, work harder to stay in shape. And a lot of people are under the illusion that um, when they become Christians everything's hunky-dory and everything's easy street and there's no more work. We're just going to skate our way into heaven just by saying a prayer or whatever else we bought into. And uh, tonight's lesson is from number seven from the onebridge.com full armor of God study. We've talked about God's law, sin, the reality of hell and judgment and Satan and demons. And um, leaves us with the question, where do we go from here? And before I get into that, where do we go from here? I want to read to you a quote from Charles Stanley. He says, The believer's self-life is composed of the habits, attitudes, and relationships he or she is unwilling to. To surrender. Keeping those things from the Lord gives people a sense of independence, which is highly prized in our current culture. However, by following self, we interfere with God's purpose. He wants every aspect of our life submitted to His will. That's from Charles Stanley, and it can be summed up in two words, absolute surrender, and that's what God wants. Now we're going to go into John 1, verse 29. It says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Then we're going to go to John 8, 7 through 11. We're going to pick this story up at the point where... The masses were picking up stones to, to stone the woman that was caught in adultery. And verse 7 starts with this, But Jesus bent down and start, started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him to be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, at this, those who heard began to go away one at, one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one, con has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Acts 2.38 Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3.19 Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Luke 24, 45-47 Then he opened up their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Romans 1.5 Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. Romans 12, 1-2 to 
Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We're going to take a closer look at that. those two verses. Okay, It starts out saying, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. Okay, let's stop there. What Paul is going to talk about next needs to be looked at in this light, right? What light? In view of God's mercy. We are wretched sinners deserving of eternal punishment, but instead he gave us mercy. Mercy available to all, but not given to all, right? A quote from Charles Spurgeon, I'll paraphrase. If you do not feel you have any sin to repent of, I do not have the message of Christ for you. So who, who, is, who is mercy for? For those that recognize they are sinners and know that redemption can only be found at the foot of the cross, right? So what are we supposed to do in view of this mercy we received and did not deserve? So let's continue on to the verse. It says, To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Notice that God wants a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. And this completely dispels the notion that the fanatics that fly planes in the buildings and the like, that are, are, they're not offering themselves really to God. That's not God. That's ridiculous. God wants a living sacrifice. So they are clearly not of God, but of Satan. Notice that to surrender your entire life as a living sacrifice is worship. I mean, that is awesome. Worship isn't only singing in church or worshiping and ser- and is serving others. Worship, I'm sorry, worshiping is serving others, reading the word, praying your work when done for, the, for God. Read Colossians 3 about that. Uh, it's all about worship when we do it for the, from the, for the kingdom, from the kingdom's perspective, right? In view of God's mercy, and it says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Okay, what is the pattern of this world? First of all, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. The world in this context is all, context is all the lust of the flesh that poison our mind and our heart, sexual morality, greed, which is idolatry, gossip, envy, covetedness, bitterness, anger, rage, worry, laziness, foul language, the list goes goes on and has no end. This is the pattern of this world. So it says in, in Romans 12, so do not conform any longer to it. Lustful thought, no, I love Jesus more. Want to gossip about so-and-so? No, I love Jesus more. Want to stay bitter about what so-and-so did you did to you many years ago? No, I love Jesus more. You get the idea. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because we need to be transformed, don't we? I mean, it's easy to be bitter. It's easy to be angry, to worry, to gossip, to use foul language. All that is easier. Because when we lived in the flesh for so long, but we must now consider ourselves dead because Christ lives in us. To those that repent, and put their trust in Christ, Jesus Christ, He sends His Holy Spirit to dwell in us. I mean, that is amazing. You mean, you know, it's like, you mean I got, I have God in me, living in me? And, that's, and the answer is yes. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, so you tr- should treat it as, this, as such. Be transformed. He promised the old will be gone and the new has come. So we need to act like it. And that's going to take work. That's hard work. Okay, I'm going to leave you with that. I have a few more verses left on the Lesson 7, but I'm running out of time. So if you want to check that out, it's Lesson 7 on theonebridge.com. God bless you all. We'll see you.